So welcome. Happy Thanksgiving, first of all, to everybody who's here uh, live with us today and uh, people who are going to watch the recording afterwards. I know a lot of people uh, requested that I record this because they're either traveling or with um, loved ones uh, Thanksgiving today. Those of you who've uh, who ventured out there so into the into the COVID world, COVID-19 world here and are, and are traveling. In fact, um, ironically, the, the, the friend who uh, she suggested that I do this today, she's not, she can't be with us live, but she'll be watching the recording. So I just wanted to thank her again, uh, anonymously, but publicly, I guess is the phrase, um, for suggesting this. Um, just a kind of little overview, what I'm gonna do with you today, it's not a meditation class, so, uh, but we are gonna do a group meditation. But since today is Thanksgiving, you know, I want to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving and how, uh, how I view Thanksgiving. Um, but I'm also working on my next book right now. And uh, many of you uh, have maybe have read my first book. Here's my first book. This is my first book, Overcoming the Fear of Death. Um, but, um, and I've seen in that book that I had... Um, almost completed my, uh, what then was gonna be my second book, which is related fears to overcoming the fear of death. Um, but I've rejigged the order of my book. So that's gonna be my third book. I'm sorry, I apologize to those of you who are waiting like, where's that supposed uh, sequel to this uh, first book? Um, and the reason is, is because um, uh, this April, is a um, is the birthday of somebody who I have a of a, a connection with, um, and somebody who uh, has thought a lot about similar things that I think about and I have been thinking about for this lifetime and many other lifetimes um, about how to live life and how to improve the quality of our life in in our common, I think, pretty common amongst all of us humans in our common pursuit of happiness. And so how can we do that a little bit more effectively? So that the, the second book that I'm, I'm uh, putting the manuscript together now of is a collection of 60 plus essays that I've written, short essays on, on, on promoting a more fruitful, productive, happy um, life. And um, I've uh, just uh, pulled together all the essays and so forth, and it looks like it's gonna be around a 200 page book. Um, but I'm in the process of writing some of the um, lead in essays and so forth to, to set up the, the compilation um, in this book. And in the process of that, um, I have, uh, been, been um, connecting, reconnecting with some, some of the um, thinking that, um, that, uh, that, that I've been thinking about for uh, all these many lifetimes, not only including in these essays, but uh, that I've written now in the 21st century, but also some of the thinking that I've had in uh, previous times. And uh, one connection that some of you know that I have a, a very close connection uh, with is the ideas and what are known as the meditations of Marcus Aurelius, who was a, um, a Roman emperor in the first century AD, so around 2000 years ago. And so what I thought I'd do today is kind of um, open our discussion or, or open our, our talk today, uh, before I get into some of uh, my idea about Thanksgiving, share some ideas that resonated with, with me that he wrote 2000 years ago. Uh, and those of you who've been in my meditation class, all of you have been in my meditation class before, but some people who will be watching this on YouTube may not yet have taken my meditation class, but you'll see uh, some common themes and so forth in the way that I teach in the way that, that some of the ideas that, that he, he expressed 2000 years ago. Um,
So let me just read a, a couple of them. People seek retreats for themselves in the country, by the sea, and near the mountains. And you too are especially prone to desire such things. But this is a sign of ignorance, since you have the power to retire within yourself whenever you wish. For nowhere can a person retire more full of peace and free from care than into one's own soul above all. If one has that place within oneself into which one can turn one's attention, one is immediately at ease. And by ease, I mean nothing other than the right ordering of the whole person. Continually give yourself this kind of retreat and regenerate yourself. But keep your rules of living brief and basic so that when consulted, they will immediately wash away all distress and send you back to your work without resentment. So what is Marcus Aurelius saying there in the words that you and I speak to each other today in 21st century? He's talking about turning within, right? Turning within, connecting with ourselves in this unique way that you know, I happen to call meditation, we could call it anything, we could call it whatever you want, I call it turning within meditation. He's speaking about that again, remember this is from 2000 years ago. And here's another, another short paragraph from Marcus Aurelius. For the time that remains, remember the humble refuge which is yourself. And above all, do not be anxious or overextend yourself, but be truly independent and see circumstances from the perspective of a man, of a human being, of a citizen, of a creature who will surely die. But among the thoughts that are closest at hand, which you will look to, let these two be there. First, that various difficulties need not penetrate to your soul, but can remain external, unaffecting. Such disturbances come from nothing other than your internal judgments. Second, remember that all the things which you now see are changing and will not continue to exist as they are. Continually bear in mind how many changes you have already witnessed. The cosmos, cosmos is, in, is constant change and our lives are but a series of choices. So again, choices, free will, what you hear me talk about, personal choices that we make, that's what we need to focus our attention on those choices we make and the types of choices we make. One last short paragraph I'll read from Marcus Aurelius. Um, Never consider anything to be beneficial to you which could ever compel you to violate your faith in yourself, to abandon your modesty, to hate anybody to be overly suspicious, cursing, disingenuous, or to lust after anything which must be hidden behind walls or veils. <laughs> Most important, such a person will live life, life neither chasing it nor fleeing from it. Also, such a person does not care at all whether his soul is kept contained in the body for a long or short span of time. For even if he must depart at once, he will do this exactly as he would accomplish any deed, which can be done in a self-respecting and orderly manner. Throughout one's life, watching out for this alone, that the, the mind not adopt a manner of life unfit for a thinking and communal being. So what is he saying there? He's just saying that we have this life to live, use it, 
live it, live it completely, live it as fully as we can, but without hurting other people, being as honest and genuine with ourselves as we can, not worrying about when we're going to die and how long we're going to live, because if we live our lives in that manner, we have lived our lives as fully as we can while we are in this physical body, in this lifetime. in this, what he calls, self-respecting and orderly manner. And he, in this last admonition, what he is saying, watching out for, is be careful that the mind not adopt a manner of life unfit for a thinking and communal being. What's he saying there? He's saying, don't fall prey. Don't get seduced by not thinking clearly, by just overreacting, either to hurt yourself or to hurt others, because we are communal beings. We are living together in families, in towns and cities and countries. Here as human beings on planet Earth, we are communal beings. We are together, living together. So he's saying, remember that, Live your life in that way, and you will live a full life without regret, is essentially what he was saying. So again, those are some a few words from 2,000 years ago, um, and I'll be giving a lecture in April on his 1900th birthday. So he was born April 26, I believe, in the year 121 AD. So um, in honor of his 1900th birthday in uh, four or five months, I'll be, I'll be giving a talk on some of those and some of my other uh, favorite um, meditations. And he refers to them as meditations or he didn't even call them meditations. You need to understand that he didn't write the, those ideas down thinking that they would ever be published. Uh, he was just writing them down as ideas to, to, to help himself, really, as he self-reflected uh, in between battles in Parthia in various parts far away, far, far away from Rome, sitting in his tent uh, in various Roman forts and so forth uh, out in the, uh, in the hinterlands, far, far away from Rome. Um, so he never thought that they would be published. Uh, and he didn't refer to them as meditations, but that's what people have referred them to them at, as now. But different from what you and I think of as meditation, obviously. We think of it as turning within and closing our eyes. He talks about that process in his meditations, in his books uh, that, well, again, he didn't think of them as books, but this collection of his ideas that have been put into books. Um, but uh, more contemplations, we might call them, contemplations or contemplative ideas uh, about living life. So here's an essay that I wrote um, a couple of years ago. Some of you may have read this on my website, uh, specifically about Thanksgiving. And so my essay title is, What is Thanksgiving? As many of you know, I like to reflect and I have memories old memories. So what's Thanksgiving not? Thanksgiving is not the mythical celebration of the pilgrims thanking the Native, Native Americans, the Native Indians, at some we're all one dinner party with turkey and all the fixings. The truth, which our children should be taught, is that when the local Indians helped the clueless pilgrims survive their first winter, the pilgrims later reciprocated by sending smallpox blankets to kill the Indians. Just like I remember the US government doing 200 years later to the Lakota, some people refer to them as the Sioux, the Lakota and other native nations, native tribes. Yes, it was genocide. So that's not what Thanksgiving is, that whole myth. Then what is Thanksgiving? I think for many of us, it's a time to reflect 
and to thank those who are in our lives in various capacities, to thank them and love them in the way Jesus taught us. Jesus, the teacher, not Jesus, the religious idol. To love them and accept them for who they are, not who we wish they would be. That's what he taught love is. Now, accepting their strengths is easy. But what about their weaknesses that other people have that we see in them? That means we see their shortcomings and we accept them in this definition of love. We see the shortcomings, but we accept them, not by abiding or supporting their cruelties, let's say, but instead by seeing clearly those weaknesses, yet at the same time, not trying to change who that person is at their core, because only they can do that. That's true acceptance of that person. That is loving that person in the way Jesus talked about. And loving that person in that sense of acceptance without trying to change that person does not mean we need to keep him or her in our close orbit either. It could mean we separate and move away figuratively or literally. Yet that still constitutes love in the way Jesus taught. These nuances of love have been lost over the past 2,000 years. Perhaps it's time we recalibrate our understanding of love so we can begin to give more fully, each of us, and be truly thankful in our gifts to each other of living life, especially today, but every day. So I wish everyone a wonderful Thanksgiving with those words from both Jesus and from Marcus Aurelius. Um, any comments, questions from anybody on any of that before we meditate together? Or do you have any questions about meditation, of course? Getting the benefits is always, always about the technique and being comfortable with it. Um, any questions on anything from anybody? Hey, Calvin, this is yes. Susan. Susan, yes. A question about meditation, like the first part, how long should I do that? When you say the first part, there's three parts. So you're talking about the, uh, the not the rushing in part or what? The settle down part. How can I know I'm ready to do the technique part? Yes. So that's a very good question, Susan. Thanks for asking that. I'm sure other people have thought about this question too. So remember, you have the three parts to the, tech, to the process. You have the not rushing in part, which Susan is asking about. And you have the technique part in the middle. And then you have the resting period or the transition period, whatever you want to call it on the back end, right? And you can lie down and rest if it's convenient. Uh, you're in a convenient place. You can do the resting period lying down. So Susan's asking about the very, very first part. How long? How do you know? You just know, Susan and everybody, just you're not rushing in. That's all. So the length of time really doesn't matter. When you hear me say, ah, approximately half a minute, you sit there. I really loosely, very, very loosely mean a half a minute. So does not have, you know, it can be 15 seconds. It could be 10 seconds. It could be 20 seconds. It doesn't have to be, you know, even close to 30 seconds. Or it could be 45 seconds or a minute. It could be, you know, it's very flexible. But the point is just so you don't, you don't feel like you're rushing in. So to be clear about your understanding on this, you do not need to feel relaxed in that half a minute either. So you don't have to feel like, oh, I'm starting to settle down. Because I've given you guys the example of sometimes, you know, I'm running around doing stuff. You know, I'm not just sitting here meditating all day. You know, I'm running around doing stuff. And, you know, the other day I was at the pool swimming and I go to a heated pool in my city. So if my pool is not heated, so it's only about 45 degrees. And so uh, I go to a heated pool. Well, I'm, I'm rushing to get back uh, to meditate with somebody 
um, you know, because they, 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 they had to change the time a little bit and so forth. So I, I want to get back in time to, to, to rinse off the chlorine uh, and, and be ready to meditate with one of you, for example. Well, I sit to close my eyes to meditate with you, and I'm not feeling that settled, to be honest, okay? Just to be totally candid, I am not feeling settled because I'm just sort of running around, running around, just went swimming, and I don't know, hopped in the shower, rinse the chlorine off. Oh, the phone's ringing, you know? And so I sit and close my eyes with you. Um, I'm just not rushing in at the beginning, just like you. I'm no different from you. Um, you know, and I've been meditating for 50 years. So it just, our minds all operate the same. Whether you, I, you're like me, I'm meditating 50 years, or you've been meditating for, you know, five days, five weeks, five months, five years. The, our minds pretty much all operate the same. When we're hurried, the mind is active, okay? Not a big deal. So I just sit, close the eyes, and uh, just so I'm not rushing in. That's all it is, okay? All right, does that help, Susan? Yes, this is very helpful. Great, good. Really good question. Very practical question. Um, by the way, I've had this question too. People have you know, wondered, oh, do, uh, do, are my eyes closed during that half a minute? Yes, your eyes are closed during the whole three-part process, all right? Your eyes are closed. The only time you would open your eyes, which you could do anytime, is um, you know um, if you got up and you wanted to move to a different chair, or or ah, oh, I started sitting in my chair over there. I think I'm in the middle of a meditation. I I changed my mind. I really I want to go sit on the bed and put some pillows there and sit in the bed. Okay, well then you're going to open your eyes up right and walk across the room so you don't bang into any furniture. Well, that's just the practical reason you're going to open your eyes up. But for the most part, your eyes are closed from the beginning, half a minute, do the meditation part, the rest period, okay? You know, pretty much closed, okay? That whole time, all right? Any other questions, anything else? Thank you, and I have one more question. Sure, yes. Um, sometimes I have a little bit of fear during the meditation because um, I was afraid to see something unpleasant or I would have like an out of body experience, which I never had, but I just yep. had this fear. How can I overcome that? So if you have the fear, first of all, there's two things on that, Susan. One is you have the fear, you treat it like any other thought. So this is one, 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 one tip, all right? And you, may, and you may end up applying both of these tips or one of these tips, okay? But I'm gonna give you some options here, all right? So the first knee jerk, the knee jerk always to whatever the thought is, if it's a fear, if it's a thinking about uh, cashews in the refrigerator that uh, you know I was eating this morning, uh, it just treat them the same way. That's always the first tip. So I, that's the example you sometimes hear me use in the class. I say peanut butter. It's like, if you're thinking about peanut butter or almond butter in your meditation, are, is that, would you, Susan, would you think that that would be a troublesome thought? Oh, I'm thinking about peanut butter. No, of course not, right? It's just like, yeah, peanut butter. So what I'm saying is treat that thought that you're having the same way, because otherwise we're paying more attention or giving more power, or we're starting to act on the content of, your, of the thought that you just gave as an example, the fear or you know, being concerned that you're going to have some out-of-body experience or something. That, that fear, that concern, we don't give it power by not acting on it. That's how you, that's how you avoid giving po a power away to it, so to speak. I'm figuratively using that phrase, you know, giving power away to it. So technically, what you do is be mechanical with the technique, which you know, Let's go back to the sounds, realize you're off of it. Now, that's the first, that's the first uh, approach. If it's still there and it's very strong, Susan, then what do you do? You know the you know the answer to this. Um, What's the fourth rule? Don't force. No, that's the first rule. That's the first rule, right? What's the fourth one? So it's the first one is no force. What's the second rule? Mm, sorry, I forgot. Be comfortable. Yeah. Right. Third rule is no judging experiences, which is what I just went through with you just now. Yeah. Right? Fourth one is if it's really intense and you're going to have to start to force, 
You never violate the no forcing rule. So what do you do? The fourth rule, when in doubt. Remember that rule? Do you remember that rule, Susan? Mm, no, I don't, sorry. When in doubt, stop, lie down. Mm -hmm. Don't force to think the sound, all right? Yeah. You need to look at the uh, summary sheet again. You need to yeah. review that again, okay? You know the bullet points, okay? When in doubt, all right? All right, that's how you handle that. Okay. So, so the, the fact that you're having a negative thought is completely 100% irrelevant and does not affect your meditation technique at all. It's the same as the thought that I had in January, I think it was, when I told you guys that I, it's just a true story. <laughs> it's not a made up story. It's a totally true story. Uh, I, I got a flat spare tire that's, that's literally so cracked. I didn't, you know, I hadn't looked at it in it probably since I bought the car used in Texas and Texas is really hot. So, so for all those years, it's sitting in this heat, this, you know, spare tire hanging outside the car it's not in the it's not in the car well there's no car well it's underneath the car so it's exposed to the weather and so it got so dried out it's all cracked it won't even hold air i had to get a new spare tire and so do you remember susan the story i told you and the other students i'm sitting here in meditation worrying about getting a flat tire because i have no spare tire right so in my meditation i'm having worrisome fearful thoughts to use your words okay i'm a, I'm a I'm afraid that I'm going to get a flat on the highway and AAA is going to come and then gouge me and sell me. I have to sell me. A, I'm sorry, Mr. Chin, but the only tire I have here to sell you is a $400 tire. So now I got a $400 spare tire, right? So that's what I'm thinking during my meditation. Did it, did it hurt my meditation to think those negative thoughts, fearful thoughts about my tires? No. Why? Because I meditated correctly, because I knew that it's just like, ah, treat it like almond butter, treat it like peanut butter thought. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm thinking about worrying about my getting a flat. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go back to the technique. That's it. Right. And if it was really strong, which it wasn't, but if it got really, really strong, what would I do? I would have the fourth rule. I just reminded you of Susan, mm -hmm. lie down and rest. And the yeah. reason that the, the intensity of the, of the experience and the thoughts and the emotions um, would increase is why? Because I'm releasing a whole bunch of junk. That's why. It has nothing to do with my flat tire thought or whatever you're thinking, Susan. It has to do with you're releasing some old baggage from 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago that you're unaware of. And we don't care what it is. All we care that it's going. So the technique, all the instructions I'm giving you are geared to do what? They are geared to promote the releasing and the continued releasing of what you're describing. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Like last night, I kept thinking, what if I get out of my body and then I would be able to come back? I know it's ridiculous, but I had to stop. Yeah. Last I checked, everybody's been able to come back even when they, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. so, you know. Yeah, it's just, um, it's just, uh, you know, some irrational thought, but, you know, treat it the same way you treat thinking about peanut, you would think, I mean, you would treat thinking about peanut butter, okay? Okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Good question. Anything else before we meditate together? Anything else? Okay, so as you guys know, I'm going to walk us through step by step the uh, meditation uh, just the start, and so I'm going to keep track of time and everything, so you don't have to time everything, anything, so it makes it very, very easy for you. So just sit comfortably first, and just close the eyes.
open our eyes. Again, let's close our eyes. And again, let's open our eyes. So when we close our eyes, naturally feel some quietness inside, right? Everyone feels some quietness inside? Yeah, good, good. Let's close our eyes again. Close your eyes again. And again, let's open our eyes. So still feel some quietness inside when we close the eyes, right? Everyone knows some quietness, yeah. And in that quietness, you probably noticed you had some thoughts, some mental activity pop up in the mind, right? And you notice how easily, how effortlessly, how automatically the thoughts just, there they are, right? So that's just how easily, just how effortlessly we should think to sound. Okay, so this time when we close the eyes, we just sit easily for about half a minute or so, and then start to think the sound in that same easy, effortless way we think any other thoughts, and we'll meditate together. Okay, let's close our eyes.
keep the eyes closed and rest for a little while. I'll let you know when the time's up. So you can lie down if you want, if it's convenient. I'll let you know when the rest period is up.
slowly, open the eyes. If you want to rest longer, you can rest longer, of course. Always can rest longer in these group meditations if you want. All right, easy, comfortable. Questions, anything? Anybody keep it easy and simple. Remember, it's basically just the normal natural process of thinking the sound and then whatever happens, happens, right? Take a long enough rest period on the back end always. Doesn't matter if you feel deep, if you don't feel deep, doesn't matter. Always take the rest period. Any questions, anything? Anything at all, all right? Great, great to have everybody on. Uh, I'm going to dump down.